Hey Scorpios, how y'all doing? Welcome, we're gonna be doing your December general reading. So your meditation, whoa, I wanna say golden apples and Avalon. <laughs> I, I saw a bunch of ants. Uh, I saw, well, I heard the word timber and I saw this big tree fell, okay? I saw all of these ants swarm it and just start to work away on it, these larger than life ant, like worker ants. And they transform this fallen piece of, uh, you know, wood, this, this tree into this pure gold. They stood it up and it was this pure gold sort of statue that kind of had this top like a crescent moon, right? Like this. And then I saw this woman step forward. I'm not, I felt like maybe, um, like not Athena, but someone like a goddess or like a energy that's related to, I want to say the lady of Avalon, like, um, the lady of wisdom, right? The, the goddess that is associated with, with wisdom and foresight and self-knowledge. And I saw her holding this apple uh, that was turned to gold. So uh, let's talk about apples briefly. Um, <laughs> let's just go there, Scorios. You know, um, apples have long been equated with knowledge, right? If you think about how they, you know, come into, you know, fairy tales or mythologies, um, they're, all, they're always, always, always related to wisdom and, and what happens when you bite into the apple and about, you know, the seeds, you know, they're in and all of that. I feel like this is a very special time for you. Um, in December, it feels like there is something that is deeply rooted and connected to your soul purpose and why you're here and you having a really good line on what that is and enjoying the benefits of it somehow. It feels incredibly um, like your hard work is paying off in a really beautiful way and I really like it. It feels like a really good energy around that. Really good. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, listen, if this came out for any other sign, I might say, okay, let's talk about, you know, uh, five of swords energy and like needing to be a lot. But the fact that this is coming out for you, Scorpio, I, I, I'm taking it as very auspicious and a really beautiful energy. Okay. So th this is you coming out in your own reading. I, I, I don't even know if that's ever happened before, honestly. So th this is, this is really beautiful. And I, I'm really drawn to the fact that, you know, scorpion energy can often come about when it, it really needs its alone time. But I'm feeling like for you guys, this is really speaking to the work that you have done on your own or within for yourself. And then the gold here, right? And the red. This is something that is bur being birthed with and through and for you. It really feels like your golden time, your prime hour, your prime time. It really feels like you are at the height of something and really enjoying it. And I really do feel like it is um, somehow connected to when I say like, you know, self-knowledge, self-awareness, your own wisdom, what you're good at, what you're here to do, sole purpose, right? And then we have you coming up in your own reading like that. It really feels like you are directly connected. You're not looking away from who you are, the aspects of yourself that, that are less than desirable. You're going, no, I incorporate everything all together. And from it, I am erecting this monument that is just an absolute work of art. It's, it's really special. Um, it's really nice. Let's see what's going on. <laughs> okay. So we have the Lord of Wands here. So this is the King of Wands, which is so, makes so much sense. So the King of Wands is the creative king, right? He's, he's very creative. The wands rule, the actions that we do or don't take, artistic projects, what we're passionate about, who we're passionate about. And then we have the King of Wands coming in here. He's also a master of uh, when to move and when to be still. Um, or when to say yes to something, when to say, let me think about it, or when to say no. He is the master of divine timing, okay? So the fact that he is being shown here as well, like in this form with, I believe this is Ganesha and the snake and the Sith here, you know, this is very, feels very transformative. And it feels like you are rising above your station in a really positive way, where it's like, like I said, you're kind of incorporating all everything at your disposal, all these aspects of yourself that are coming together to go, I am capable of X, Y, Z. I am worth X, Y, Z. I see myself fully and completely. I'm no longer being, um, you know, affected by my subconscious or the aspects of myself that I wish weren't there, wish were different, right? It feels like you are fully informed and aware of who you are, where you're going and your potential. 
And that just feels like sign me up, you know. <laughs> feels really nice. Airplanes. Okay. <laughs> so many. This is like a double, double airplanes. Here we have, look with the airplane, right? Remember, Ganesha is there, there's a remover of obstacles as well. So that in hermit energy as well, which speaks of like, you know, um, the light of illumination and, and having some of those, you know, questions and answers and, you know, around your own path and purpose and divinity in general. So we have the two of swords here, which is really interesting because we have, again, this airplane, right? This mountaintop and this serpent coming up from the sea. So two of swords, traditionally speaking, is sort of like a stalemate or pause in the action. It's it's bringing together your head and your heart for 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 conference and giving them each equal floor time to speak and say what they need to say. I just saw 555 on the timer as well, which is the number of chained. I'd like to point that out. I I have to tell you, I, I really feel like the serpent coming out of the water here and you flying high above, going to this like high mountaintop peak is really you soaring above the aspects of yourself that have inhibited you. I'm telling you, like that's what this feels. I'm I'm hearing that song. Is it a uh, Mary J. Blige? Like I fly above all the drama, all the drama. I fly above all the drama. But I feel like a lot of this drama, like some, it could be external for sure. But I feel like a lot of it was like internal. You're flying above your own internal drama, <laughs> and in doing so, reaching new peaks and new heights that you didn't know you were capable of before, right? And I feel like part of, of this came through back to the scorpion energy, time and stillness, time on your own, or maybe someone close to you kind of saying, hey, I'm going to point a couple of things out to you. And I, I hope that you take it in the way that <laughs> it's intended, because I feel like you're holding yourself back in this way, or I feel like you're capable of more. Or I feel like if you made this change, it might lead to this desired result, whatever have you, right? I cannot. Eight of Wands. This is fast forward movement, upward ascension, communication, travel, movement, spiritual progress, all of the good things. This is no surprise at all. You know, do you see this little coffin down here? And then we see this like woman, right? This kind of looks like the Lady of um, Apollonia that I saw, like with the apple. So it kind of like rising above this aspect of you that, had, you know, had been dormant or just like affecting you subconsciously. You know, even, even what you thought your life would look like or things that you thought you, whatever that is, or where you thought you'd be by this age or where you thought you'd be at this point, whatever that is. It's like, it's not, it, it is that you're rising above it, but it's like you're, you're incorporating it along with you right? It's like you've mummified it and preserved it for prosperity <laughs> or posterity, right? But it, it's like you're kind of looking above and going, I'm going to keep moving upward and ascending because I am incorporating the aspects of myself, even the less desirable ones, because I understand that they play a part in the whole of my potential and who I am. I'm also hearing there's an aspect of vulnerability that I'm getting here really, really strongly. There's an aspect of vulnerability. I feel like part of this is like putting yourself out there in a new way or putting yourself out there in a way that feels a bit scary or a bit risky and, and not in like a negative way, but it kind of feels like I took a risk and I went for it. Like, why do I feel like this plane maybe only has a little bit of gas in it, but there was nowhere to get gas. And it was like, you could either like stay on the ground and, and be safe or like fly above this serpent and reach the mountain and taking a bet that you had enough gas in the tank. That's what it feels like. And then eight of wands is just like, whoop. Listen, we have an airplane flying above the snake of change and transformation, shedding the old skin. We have an airplane over another snake <laughs> coming out of the scorpion waters here, right? Going to the top of the pinnacle here with the moon. And then we have eight of wands, which is literally rising above an escalation and going ahead and forward and upward to your highest and best potential. It's like, wow. I'm hearing get a move on, yes, in a really wonderful way. It feels very empowered. Most of the signs have gotten a lot of messages about needing to rest. I'm not getting that here. Oh, yes. Oh, my Lord. Wow. Okay. The altar priestess. Preparation, prayer, sacred ritual. Wow. This is really, really cool. So, first of all, with the altar priestess, this is about manifesting your own desired given circumstances. This is about understanding that the first step to, you know, living the life that you want to live is being clear about the life that you want to live and setting that intention. Now, I want to point something out. There is a difference. So 
if you say, I want this, just for an example, I want this specific job to come to me at the, by this specific time, that is very limiting, right? And you could be cutting yourself off from something much, much better. Another job at another time, right? Or let's flip it. And that's the message of the altar priestess is saying, open it up a bit while being clear and saying, I want to live a financially and creatively abundant and satisfying life, right? Within divine timing. Then allow the universe to bring you your order that's not so overly specific, right? That you're getting less than than what you could have gotten if you open it up a bit more, right? So it's this delicate balance that we we kind of like live with them within the house of manifestation where we say like, I, I, I understand that I create my own reality. It's about being clear on what I want without being too overly specific to think that I can see, you know, more clearly than the, than the universe or my guides or whatever have you, which can see clearly in all directions of time and space, right? I'm really drawn to this lotus flower here as well, which looks really beautiful, but comes up from a lot of hard work and, and, and you know, dirt and muck and excrement, right? To look beautiful on top here. And I'm really hearing that you're in a place of empowerment and getting very clear on the fact that you, it is up to you, <laughs> right, to manifest the changes that you want to see through clear thought, intention, trust, and then absolutely surrendering it to the powers that be, the universe, whatever language you want to insert here that feels good to you in order to have that be your reality in whatever way, shape, form, or time it wants to come in, right? It's really beautiful here. So it feels like you're you're like dancing a manifestation dance, but it feels really empowered and really, really good. And it, it feels like it's di directly linked to you having a real true line to who you are, all aspects of you, what would make you really happy and what you're actually here to do. And then moving ahead with that. And, and that's the key, it really is. That is the key. When we are all doing work that we are here to do, that, that, that really serves us, it starts to matter less. Like uh, other things start to matter less, right? And it, when we're doing that kind of work, we can find that happy gratification in, you know, the smaller moments, or the smaller things, because we're aligned with our purpose, right? It's when we're, we're doing work that we're not here to do. It's coming from our ego or fear or whatever else that we feel like, oh man, everything is askew. <laughs> Even if you have all the money in the world, it's like, it's like, oh, but I don't feel like not feeling great, right? Not feeling in alignment, but you guys feel in alignment. You are doing the happy manifestation dance and it feels really, 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 really good. Don't be afraid to keep what you're doing to yourself as well around some of this manifestation so that it can grow, okay? Without being exposed to the elements or, you know, opinions of others, okay? All right, brilliant. All right, Scorpios, this is your December general reading. I so hope that this helped and resonated. If so, please let me know in the comments below because I love reading your comments. With that being said, I'm wishing you a most blessed and happy December. I will be back with you quite shortly for the 2022 readings. And just thank you. Thank you guys, as always, for being here. But most of all, you know, thank you for being you. And be well. Until next time.